Hey everybody, this is Jason Wright with ThreatWise TV and I'm continuing our discussion about securing the data center today. Joined by a couple of product managers, I have Sandeep Agrawal with StealthWatch and Joe Prakash with Tetration. Gentlemen, thanks for being here, we appreciate you. Thank thanks you. for having us. So we've talked a little bit about this very recently with Navendra about securing the data center. We talked about Tetration as being a workload protection technology that resides on the servers and the virtual machines with the, and even the containers, monitoring what the applications are doing and who they're talking to and then providing a great deal of visibility, right? Yeah. Outstanding. And we've also uh, definitely talked about StealthWatch. Everybody knows that that is our our security analytics technology that's kind of watching everything for for breaches and abnormal behaviors, establishing a baseline, and then looking for deviations. Exactly. But the more important thing is not how these technologies work independently, but how they work together. And that's what we're here to talk about today. So tell me what it is that we're trying to solve in the data center that brought the two technologies together. Yeah, thanks, Jason. So. If everybody's paying attention to the news, they know that we have a major breach every few weeks. Oh yeah. I don't want to name names. You don't have to. Everybody <laughs> reads the news. <laughs> everybody reads the news, but they're they're grabbing millions of records of personally identifiable information. Yes. They're grabbing intellectual property, they're grabbing financial records. And the worst part is this happening to large companies with lots of security tools, lots right. of security investments, 24 by 7 operations. So what actually is going on here? Yeah. So when we look at this, we see a number of things that are common to all of these cases. One is that most of these threats begin in a branch office or a remote office. Interesting, okay. Secondly, they're taking weeks or months to learn the network and learn how to access the data center and all its corporate assets. So they're like getting in and looking around and making sure before they actually launch the actual exfiltration That's of the right. information. That's okay. exactly right. And then you have these islands of automation, which everybody's invested a lot of money in, that are seeing the dots, but they're not connecting the dots. So it's a lot like the nomads are sailing to island to island, and you can see that they're there. You don't know where they've come from. You don't know where they're going. And, and the last thing that's happening is that in the data, once they get to the data center, well, you can see all the retrievals, but you can't see whether the retrievals are unauthorized. Okay, well, extra credit for a sailing reference, first of all. <laughs> As a sailor, I love that. But yeah, we talk about the, the, uh, the, the vendor isolation when companies have multiple security technologies, but they're not communicating right. or working together to exchange information. That's, right. That's what we're trying to do. Yeah. Talk to me about what Tetration is seeing as part of the issues and how we're solving. Absolutely. So in, within the data center, if you look at it, the workloads are the key assets that the customers right. are trying to protect. Those are the crown jewels with, for an organization, right? And even today, the predominant security design for a data center is perimeter-based. And we know that uh, that model no longer is sufficient because of the dynamic applications that are there within the data, within the data centers today. Absolutely, and I, I talk all the time when I talk about the problems in the data center, it sounds like the problems of the network at large from several years ago. We, need, we have a perimeter, but it's soft on the inside. We need to be able to see more of what we're trying to protect. Is that where is that where Tetration is coming in for the uh, data center? Absolutely, and there is one more dimension or the one more uh, complexity to it today's data center extends into public clouds as of well. Of course, they don't so, even have control over it themselves. Exactly, and it's a multi, multiple clouds in most of the environments, and these workloads are communicating with each other. Right. So in general, customers have to do three things in order to protect their workloads. The first and foremost is they need to contain the lateral movement by using whitelisting and segmentation. Right, so, so is, don't have this hard crunchy perimeter with a soft and gooey interior and allow everything to go east-west with absolutely. unchecked. Absolutely. Okay, makes sense. The second thing is uh, they need to identify any vulnerabilities that are associated with the software that they are running and then patch it. Very, it. very sage that advice is, and step one for any good security practitioner. Exactly, and then the third one if you look at it is identify behavior deviations of these workloads early on so that you can identify such incidents quickly and then remediate it before it becomes a major security issue for uh, the organization as a whole. So understand what's normal and then look for deviations, deviations from that. Exactly. Got it. So how are we working together with our technologies to solve that problem? Exactly. So the first problem we talked about is being able to see the path of the attack. <clears throat> 
And we're really working, Cisco's working to combine the intelligence in both products, as well as bringing in a number of other security products such as Talos and ICE to get a full holistic picture of the threat as it passes through the enterprise and gets to the data center and then address the data center in the ways that Jyoti talked about. So Cisco, so StealthWatch, what is StealthWatch doing? Well, we've got over 400 classifiers today growing every quarter. And what they're doing is detecting active threats. They're detecting reconnaissance, they're detecting um, snooping, they're detecting all sorts of behavioral things that are happening before the actual real threat gets into the place, but it's already breached the perimeter, it's already starting to do bad things. We're seeing the path of attack. Once we share that information to Tetration, and then what's Tetration doing? Uh, uh, Tetration can do multiple things taking that information. The first of all, actually we can do quarantining the workloads, right? Mm -hmm. By extending our policies in order to um, restrict the communication of such workloads that have been either compromised or where anomalies are happening. So administrators can have a deeper look. The second dimension that Tetration also provides is the visibility into what is running within the workloads as a right. pro process standpoint. Mm -hmm. Because a lot of the times these breaches and everything, they start with certain behavior changes within the process, either through a privilege escalation or a shell code execution or by certain type of attacks within the workload and then extending it to the network. Gotcha. So Tetration can also detect these type of anomalies early on and then give those alerts to Stealth Watch for further clarification to get a confirmation if something is happening on the branch side that can be correlated to. So we're sharing context and, and information about exactly. what's in the data center up to StealthWatch, exactly. and the StealthWatch is sharing information about deviations of behaviors and, and uh, identifying unique kind of outliers and classifiers, I believe yeah. you, you mentioned, yeah. to Absolutely. be able to, to communicate back, hey, this looks like something that's abnormal. Yep. Absolutely. Yep. I love yes. it. I love the sharing of information. I talk about context and policy and yep. and all of the ways that we communicate, and this sounds like a, like a yep. great way, events even, as yep. well. So how is that better than, than the situation today? Let's, talk, let's take a look at briefly exactly. at this slide. So right now, what this slide is basically showing is that StealthWatch is seeing devices, users, and threats as they're occurring. <clears throat> it's uh, Tetration is seeing and protecting corporate assets in the data center. But the questions that are really hard to answer today, which will, this will solve, is which corporate assets are actually getting attacked right now mm -hmm. It takes months and it's after the fact, it's after the scene of the crime. We can do this in minutes, what used to take months. What are they accessing and taking? What is our business exposure? Right now, it's a worst case scenario. You have to look at transaction log records months later. That's a lot of, lot of heavy reading. That's right. We need to let technology do what technology is good at and analyze things like that. If you do it near real time, there's hardly any damage. Yeah. It's, it's much, much less damage. You can see the damage as it's occurring. You can see the impact to your business. You can take action right away. Reduces the time to detect and gives you a map to move into That's remediation. Right. What data needs extra protection? You know, all the protection capabilities that Tetration has got. You can start to really focus and target as to what's your critical data. Outstanding. And meet your regulatory and compliance requirements. So that's really the, the point of this exercise. Fantastic. So I know that we have a, a demo today and a phone call. Yep. <laughs> Busy guys over here with Jetty. But tell them to wait, we're almost done. But I definitely want to see this in action first. Do we have a demo that we can show our users how everything is working and how these products are communicating back and forth so that we can share that information? So if you look here, actually in this um, screen, what we are seeing here is Tetration has identified a shell code execution on a server and uh, you can look at the full process tree lineage and what are the commands that were executed after the uh, shell um, access was got into the system. And for these type of things, behavior deviations, Tetration sends out an alert, and uh, which can be correlated by other security platforms like uh, StealthWatch. And then we can drill down further into the StealthWatch to see what exactly is happening. Yep. So now let's go to the um StealthWatch dashboard that some of you may recognize. And you'll see that it's designed to identify in minutes reconnaissance, command and control, exploitation, exfiltrations, data hoarding. And it's able to identify the host that this is occurring on. And those hosts are actually shared with, to us by Tetration. So those hosts can actually now be applications, processes, data sets. 
So mapping everything that we've seen on the hosts and, and, and the applications of what's happening and then convert that information into uh, information that StealthWatch can, can leverage. Can leverage with its classifiers. Okay. So for example, if we see an encrypted threat, we just click on that, and now you can see all the paths, everyone that that's talking to on the inside, everyone that's talking to on the outside, you can see the escalating severity of the threat, and now we can start to take action in the data center with titration. Outstanding. So based on this information, if we get a notification on the confirmed threat, so from there are a couple of things that can be done. One is you can quarantine the workload using the policy mechanism, and this policy can be updated via the APIs to make it uh, almost uh, real time. And as you can see here, we can easily add a policy here that denies all communication except allowing certain communication for somebody to investigate or either to patch the system or remediate it. And uh, you can also at any given time look at all the endpoints actually that are part of that uh, incident or that has that severity and uh, that meets that criteria. And if there are additional workloads that come dynamically and meet that criteria, they will inherit the same policy. Outstanding. And if these are remediated and then they are clean and if they don't meet that criteria, the policy will be updated automatically to remove them out of that quarantine and then based on the application profile of that workload, they will receive that appropriate policy. So we talked first about information about the context going up to StealthWatch from Tetration. Now we're talking about the event information coming back from StealthWatch to Tetration, yep. where Tetration can leverage that information to create new policies and, and react to be able to defend these threats, reduce time to detect, and stop the bad guys. Absolutely. All right, That's I exactly love it right. when our stuff starts to talk to each other. That is one of the, the best uh, most exciting topics that I, I really get into and wrap my sink my teeth into for sure. So the more I'm doing these episodes, I'm seeing more technologies that are doing that, and I'm really excited about the future that we have. So if you'd like to learn a little bit more information, go to cisco.com slash go slash secure DC, and you can see a, a whole host of information and resources to be able to dive deeper into our entire portfolio of Tetration, Firewall, ACI, and StealthWatch working together to stop the bad guys, reduce time to detect, and create a more secure environment. I've been Jason Wright, and thanks for tuning in.